Kurt Thompson. Stay with us. The women are next. But first, we're going to send you to New York and our Prudential Update Studio in Gale Garden. Individual event finals in the U.S. Championships. Hi, everybody. John Tesh, along with Olympic gold medalist Tim Daggett. We're getting set for the women's individual event finals, which will determine the best women in each one of the individual events. The floor exercise, the balance beam, the vault, and the uneven bars. And so there is a gold medal available for each one of these events. We're going to see the best of the best. That, the best of the best on all the different four disciplines. But, you know, for someone like a Shannon Miller, who came into the competition hoping to be the all-around champion, she really has something to prove here today. She hopes to go home with a few gold medals in her pocket. For someone like a Zamesco, though, who came to the competition to win the all-round championships she's on that she may feel a little bit of a letdown but she has to remember this is the exact format she'll face in the olympic games in 1992 to win those olympic gold medals and all through the all-around competition there was a worry that kim zamel was going to have to pull out because of her sprained wrist let's go down to randy hall who's with her coach bella caroli bella how strong was the temptation to pull kim zamesco from this competition i had a very serious thought about pulling her out from this competition despite her injury she did perform very well yesterday, pull till the end uh, and win the champion title. But today is the final. I was thinking very seriously. And uh, finally, I thought, uh, you know, there's a halfway. Gave her the chance to go for two events. And I pulled her out from vault and bars, the two very difficult events for her arm. So as you take a look at her bandaged wrist there, you heard Bella say it. She will not be Kim Zemeskel performing on the uneven bars or the vaults. But the vault is where we find our first competitor, 14-year-old Shannon Miller, all of 69 pounds. And Shannon, of course, very disappointing all-around competition. Finished seventh. She's looking for much better here. Nice vault, but a big hop on the landing there. Put down a little bit. Hadn't made you cause the hop. Put the pike down, you know, you cause the hop. You've got to keep it open, all right? We're going to do the handspring front now. Make sure you're getting running hard and blocking it up there. What all that means right there is she needed to stay extended in the air, completely laid out to stick that landing. Just a little bit too much rotation and, of course, that hop. Now, the women get two vaults. They'll take an average of the two. 9.750 on the first vault. Very respectable. Six judges. One high and one low thrown out. But in the final competition, they have to do a totally different vault. She'll do a handspring front here. Oh, a nice vault, but another big step on the landing. All right, just the steps around, you know, just the step. Very good block coming off the horse. Good distance, too. All right. So what is Shannon Miller's score? She is a 4-0 student and a member of the Oklahoma Honor Society. Look from above there. You see that big step on the landing. Just holds on to that tuck a little bit too long and has to take the step forward. A 9.625 in her second vault, so a little lower than the first one. And because she's the first one in this rotation, her average score, 9.687, she's the one to beat. Again, gold, silver, and bronze medals available in each one of the disciplines. Sandy Woolsey, 18 years old from Tempe, Arizona. She was second in the all-around competition. Here's her vault. She'll show us the same first vault that we saw from Shannon Miller. Nice step there. Once again, everything was good in the vault except for the landing. The big step back, but it's so okay, critical on this event. You've you got, got to stick the, the landing. So no movement at all. The horse as fast as you can. You've got to jump in and go. Okay, make it come out tight and form now. Let's go. Now watch this. Excellent push off the horse. One of the better vaults I've seen Sandy do, but just too much rotation and has to compensate with a step back. 9.812 on the first vault, so already better than Shannon Miller's vault. She'll also show us a different second vault. It's a requirement. Can't do the same one again. This is a tuck Sukahara with a full twist and a great landing. And not quite the power that she wanted off the horse, but just enough to get it around to that perfect landing. All right, because right. that gets your foot turned over, but that was good. Yeah, yeah nice clean form, okay? Good job, you got 95 or something for your first Score for Sandy, step. second ball to 9675, okay. so that's her in first place. Carrie Strug, 13 years old, the youngest competitor here at the national championships. Also coached by Kim Zemesco's coach, Bella Caroli. And vaulting, of course, a power event. This is where Carrie Strug shines. Oh, great first vault. 
Once again, the only visible error, just that small hop on the landing. Good one. So dynamic on this event. The best push-off we've seen so far. Excellent height in the air. Totally stretched. And just the smallest of hops on the landing. We mentioned it yesterday. Carey is considered by Bella Caroli to be one of the brightest hopes for the 1992 games. And a 9.85, the best score so far on her first vault. She'll show us a handspring front. The more traditional vault. Beautiful bounce off the horse. Great ball. So it looks like Kerry Strug has set the standards. Yeah, it's supposed to look like this thing. And you heard Bella say, that's the way it's supposed to look. She's her, heard that quite a few times at this competition. Her dad is a surgeon. She wants to be a pediatrician. And she has the grades for it in school. Excellent bounce off of the horse. Way in the air. Opens up. And a great landing. A bronze medalist in the women's all-around, a member of the National Junior Honor Society, a 9.80 in her second vault. So her average gives her the gold medal, and Carrie Strug is the youngest gold medalist in the history of the national championships at 13. Stay with us. There's Carrie Strug, bronze medal in the all-around competition, already scored a gold medal on the vaults. Here she is on the uneven parallel bars. And remember, this is where Carey had some problems dropped from second to third place in the all-round. Here's her release, a front flip. Beautiful. All she has left at this point is to get through a dismount, full pirouette. She took this out, a full twisting double in the all-round, but she does it there. Just a small stumble on the landing. It looks like she might have turned her ankle there as she landed. Well, actually, John, I think it's one of her heels. She landed a little bit back. I think it actually may be her left heel. Yeah, she's... She's favoring that leg. Let's see if we can see what happens in the replay here. Of course, a much more difficult dismount than she did the first day. A full twisting bull somersault. Picks up a lot of speed on her giant swing. Right, now watch her left heel. Yeah, she certainly does put a lot of pressure on that. It hits the ground first, it appears. Huh? Carry score a 9762. So since she's our first competitor, that's the score to beat. And the score for Liz Crandall, 16 years old, from Sacramento to beat. Her performance now on the uneven bars. Now you'll note that Liz opts to use a vaulting board to mount the uneven bar. That, of course, totally up to her own preference. Liz hasn't lived at home in almost four years. She left her home near Sacramento, California to live in Tempe, Arizona to train. Now that's interesting. Beautiful stalter on the low bar. You don't see that too often anymore. She'll also do a big dismount. Full twisting double. Had a great yeah. landing. Wow, now that was a set. Liz's dad, Greg, estimates it costs close to $1,000 a month to pay her gymnastics, not including phone bills, to pay for that and to keep his wife and six other kids happy. The guy works a 14-hour day selling roofing materials, and he drives a nine-year-old car with 240,000 miles on it so this young lady can, can compete. And this is the most important element of the routine, the full twisting double, and right there, the stick is ever important, especially in the event finals. Remember the score to beat of Carrie Strug and a 9.875. So Elizabeth Crandall is our new leader and she establishes the score to beat on the uneven bars. Here's Sandy Woolsey, finished silver medal in the all around. And this is a terrific routine for her. It was this routine that really won her the silver medal in the all around. That's correct, but she has a tall order to fill here. Her teammate, Elizabeth Crandall just did one of the best routines of her life. Beautiful. That's called a free hip shoot to a California hop. A nice reverse heck. They really use both bars so well. Both of these girls from the Desert Devil. She'll do uh, the identical dismount. Full twisting double. Yeah! And another stick. 
Well, I heard her coach say two in a row, referring to her routine in the all-around that won her the silver medal. And congratulations from her teammate there, Liz Crandall. Great coaching, Way to go, you guys. Guys. You guys. The only criticism I have of that is on her landing, she landed with her legs a little bit spread apart. But watch this. Real nice transition from low to high bar. Something just a little bit out of the ordinary. She sets up for her dismount. And from this view, we'll note a beautiful full twisting double. But watch the legs. They scissor right there. Uh -huh. And one lands fell in front of the other. Score to beat is 9875. 9850. Oh, so Sandy does not do it with that performance. 25 one hundredths of a point away from Liz Crandall. Our next competitor is 17 year old Shelly Stack. Shelly, of course, our only holdover from the 1988 Olympic Wad. One of the few gymnasts from the East Coast. She's from Endicott, New York. She has trained with Bella in the past, just recently left. There's her release skill. A nice piked front flip. By the way, Tim, one of Shelley's future goals is to become a television gymnastics commentator. You could be out of a job. I better look out. Full twisting double. A little bit low on that landing. You noted that she landed a little bit bent over. That, of course, will incur a deduction, a slight posture error. But here's a beautiful pike front. Well up in the air, just a little bit sloppy. But very dynamic. The score for Shelly Stack, a 9.762. So Liz Crandall is able to stay up top for the gold medal. And Shelly ties Kerry Strug for the bronze. Sandy Woolsey gets in there for the silver on the women's uneven bars. Upcoming now, Kim Zemesko on the balance beam, our defending champion in the all-around. We'll be back after these words from your local station. The gold medal on the balance beam. Here's 15-year-old Shelly Engel. She trains out of Scats Club in Orange County with Don Peters, the 1984 Olympic coach. Nice round off back handspring mount. She does some really interesting things in this exercise. I think she could definitely be a contender and be on that team in 1992. She'll show us one of those unique elements right here. This is all her own. It's a cartwheel side flip. Whoa! That's really neat. But of course, she took the risk. She's going to get a little bit of a deduction, but she's going to get some points back because it's so unique. I've never seen that before. We're always asking these gymnasts about their hobbies. This is a little out there. She collects turtles and has a collection of 12 of them. I'm not sure she travels them with her to the event. Keep in mind, this athlete is on a piece of apparatus that's four feet high and only four inches wide. It's amazing what they can do on it. Oh, that was beautiful. Side aerial right into a back handspring step out to a layout step out. This routine is jam-packed with difficulty. Only the dismount remains here. It's a double back. Oh! Wow, what a landing. Boy, this girl really is going to be someone to be reckoned with. Come down the road in Barcelona. Keep in mind the World Championships are in Indianapolis in fall. Followed, of course, by the Olympic Games. The trials will be in 1992, just prior to Barcelona. From above now, we see her routine. That's right. This is the cartwheel side flip. She's not flipping backwards or forwards. This is sideways. Just a little bit off balance there, but you can see just how unique that skill is. We've not seen another gymnast do it here. 9.75, so a respectable score. She sets the score to beats on the beam. Shannon Miller, who finished seventh in the all-around, and who just earned a bronze earlier in this competition in the vaults. Here she is on balance beam. And this is her event, world-class performer here on the balance beam. She'll show us as much or more difficulty on this event as anybody in the world. Shannon Miller coming into 
The national championships was picked as one of the favorites to win the women's all round and had a disappointing meet. She was many times in tears during the competition. She just did not deal with the pressure. Watch this, she'll go one better than everybody else. Two layout step outs right into a back handspring. Four skills in a row. And we're certainly seeing more confidence here than we did since she competed in the all around. This really is a beautiful exercise. Sometimes the routine doesn't flow. Everything looks fragmented, but everything has its place in this routine. Things extra or added just for time or other reasons. Watch this, though. The only person in the United States to ever perform this. It's a full twisting double off the beam. Wow. That is so difficult, John. So critical that the feet go down exactly where they're supposed to on the round up to get the power. 14-year-old Shannon Miller, rare at these championships, see a smile from her. She had such problems in the all-around. That was a great performance from her. Now she does four skills in a row here. Watch this, one back handspring. She'll do two layout step outs right here and follow it immediately by another back handspring. It's amazing she can pick that all in. Score from the six judges, a 9-8-8-7. Eight, eight, that will be tough to beat. Kim Zemesko, our 1991 women's all-around champion, up next on the balance beam. The score to beat is Shannon Miller's of 9-8-8-7. Eight, eight, this, of course, the first time we're seeing Kim. Bella told us at the top of the show that she would only perform on the balance beam and the floor exercise because it was less demanding on her wrist. To fill you in all week, she has suffered a sprained wrist and has traveled around with ice on it at all times when she's not competing. It was thought that she would not even compete in this national championships. Her teammate Betty Aquino, who was also a fit, has been sidelined with a stress fracture of her elbow. That full turn there, a requirement on the balance beam. She is rock solid thus far. What a competitor this young lady is. She is so composed on this event. There's never even a trace of the appearance that she may be concerned that things aren't going to go absolutely perfect. Remember that Kim Zemesko coached by Bella Caroli, who coached Mary Lou Retton and Nadia Komenich, the dismount. Double back somersault and a little bit of a hop on the landing. A great routine for Kim Zemesko, but certainly not the difficulty that we saw from Shannon Miller. There's Kim with her coach. Marta Caroli, the balance beam coach. The thing that impresses me so much about Zemeskel is her ability to concentrate, to be so focused. Just look at her face. Absolutely nothing being thought about except for doing this skill right then and there as perfectly as it can be done. I guarantee you, 9 8 1 2. I was going to say, I guarantee you, Shin Miller is looking at Kim Zemeskel's score. She is still in the lead with a 9887. There's only one woman who can knock her off, and that's 13-year-old Carrie Strug, our gold medalist on the vault. And there's Bella. Always has a reassuring word for his gymnast right before they mount the apparatus. That skill right there called a straddled plange. Boy, what a coming out party for this young lady. Her first national championships. Finishing third in the all-around. Already winning one individual event. Oh. A definite balance adjustment there. That'll be a couple of tenths. That takes her right out of the running for the gold medal here. Oh, 
is so hard, especially in the event finals. When you have an error like that, you're competing with such a great field of talent. You know right then and there, well, it's over now. Kind of have to save face and get through this the best that I can. Carrie's mom told me that she got into gymnastics because her older sister used to be on the UCLA gymnastics team. Carrie always wanted to do just what her sister did, as she put it. One day, her sister came home cast on both her arms from a floor exercise practice, and that was the end of her sister's career. Carrie has certainly proved herself here, and a lot of people are saying that she is the one to watch in Olympics. Yeah! And she stuck that dismount. That's exactly it. She has so much power. She showed it right there, and that is one of her greatest attributes. Bella and Marta Caroli with Carrie waiting for that score. Going over. Perhaps what went wrong. A 9-7-3-7. So she finishes fourth. That means Shannon Miller is the gold medalist here on the balance beam. As Bella Caroli congratulates Shannon's coach, Steve Nuno, former protege. Okay. A great day for Steve Nuno and Shannon Miller, and for Bella Caroli, who's Kim Zameskel, is a silver medalist. Miller, Zameskel, and Shelly Engel grabs the bronze. We'll be right back. Awesome, Dawson, Dominique Dawes will be the first competitor we see on the floor exercise. And hold on tight here, because she is awesome. a little girl on a playground. What a set. And the most enthusiastic response we've had to any routine here in Cincinnati. 14-year-old Dominique Dawes, all of 75 pounds. She shows not only one of the most difficult, but one of the most charismatic and exciting routines of the competition. Watch this. She'll tumble all the way across the mat. Does two whipbacks in a row. This is a double twist, changes direction here, and she's not done. Look at this double back somersault after all of that. And wow. a smile throughout the whole routine. Well, she is having so much fun up there, and look at the height on that and the extension. Let's see, the, the judges loved it. Nine, nine, one, two. A terrific score and a very tough score to beat for the woman who's going to be coming up next. Our two-time defending all-around champion, Kim Zamesko. Now, my question here, Tim, is will her sprained left wrist be a factor? Well, especially after a routine like we just saw from Dominique, I definitely do not think so. This is classic Zamesko. This is what she lives for. This is what she thrives on, this pressure to perform now.
This crowd is fired up here in Cincinnati. They know that with these last two performances, they're getting a chance to see our Olympic team. Tell me she didn't love doing that. And I loved it when Bella told her to go out there and wave to the crowd. Watch this second tumbling pass. Like I said, the only one in the world to do this. Three whip backs, count them. There's one, two, three. And then after all of that, a double back somersault. And perfectly done. Score to beat of Dominique Dawes, 9-9-1-2. Nine, nine, There's Dominique. And there's Kim on Oh, no. They have tied. Dominique Dawes and Kim Zemeskel have tied for the lead on the floor exercise. It is not over. Don't go away. Here on the floor exercise, Matt, 17-year-old Kim Kelly is following our two leaders, Kim Zemeskel and Dominique Dawes, who are tied for the lead. And that is a tough two competitors to follow, especially after the performances they just put in. It's a very unique pass here. She'll change direction right here. routine from Kim Kelly, but as we said earlier, a tough two act to follow with Dominique and of course with Kim Zemeskel. Kim Kelly with a full scholarship waiting for her at the University of Alabama when she finishes with her Olympic performance in 1992 in Barcelona. This is the most interesting pass in her floor routine. She'll do two whips, continue out of these. This is a back layout with two twists. She'll change directions. And to a front one and a quarter, right to what we call a prone drop. Let's wait for the score now. 9 9 1 2 is the score to beat a not 8 5 0. Oh. So Kelly is firmly behind the tie of Zemeskel and Dawes. Next up, Kerry Strug, another Caroli gymnast. We mentioned it before. The youngest competitor here, national championships, a lot of pressure, and she has dealt with it wonderfully. And she'll show us two very difficult tumbling passes. They're full twisting double backs. Most are doing just one. She'll do two in this exercise.
saw it in the all-around competition. Too much power at the end. Same thing right here. Just too much power. But my biggest criticism is the music. Certainly not an asset. Whereas Kim Zemesco pulls the audience in. This is a distraction. What are you trying to say there, Tim? You didn't like the music, right? <laughs> I wouldn't have picked it, no. No, baby, smile, you three. Good job. You don't get a chance to see Carrie Strug smile. She is serious business out here. Very intense little girl. There's a hug from her teammate, Kim Zemeskel, who is tied with Dominique Dawes for the lead, of course. The only element in the exercise where I saw an error, double back, same problem as in the all-round, too much power, lands with the leg slightly locked. Her score for the performance, 9-8-0, only good enough for fourth place thus far. We'll be back. The last woman with a chance to beat Kim Zemeskel and Dominique Dawes, who are tied for the lead, is Sandy Woolsey and her last performance of the national championships. We'll see a totally different style once again from Sandy Woolsey. A much more mature presentation here. her most difficult tumbling pass of the exercise is a triple twist. Oh, great landing. Silver medalists in the women's all-around, Sandy Woolsey. All right, you look great out there. Boy, a great yeah, overall competition for Sandy Woolsey. What do you think, okay? And he have been wondering if she's going to be able to hold on to Barcelona. Well, this national championships and tumbling passes like this sure point to that Sandy Woolsey will be there down the road in Barcelona. Look at that three twist, gets them all the way around. A great landing. Better than a 9-9-1-2 would win it. A 9-8-5. So Sandy Woolsey actually ties Kim Kelly for third place. Kim Zemeskel, Dominique Dawes tie for the gold. That's as close a competition as you'll see anywhere. Here's Randy Hall with our two gold medalists. Congratulations, a tie for first place. The champions of the floor exercise. Dominique, that was a superior routine. Thank you. It was one of the best routines I've ever done in a USA championship, and I've never scored over a 9-8 in the USA championship, so that was really good for me. Oh, it was just terrific, and the crowd was applauding because you did such a superb routine. Can you like that kind of pressure, to go after that kind of greatness? Yeah, I think it's better to go after a better team because then you know what you have to beat instead of when you go first, you know, the, the people behind you get a chance to see what's coming. Were you a little bit nervous because she's that kind of competitor? Yeah, I didn't know she was behind me until I heard her music, and then I got really scared, and, and I was more nervous than I was before after my routine. Congratulations to both of you. Great job. Thank you, Randy, and what an exciting finish to a great weekend of gymnastics here in Cincinnati.